Well, it's a late August day here in Halifax. It's a gorgeous day. One of those days you just have to be in the woods to enjoy it. Not as hot as it's been lately. Still warm, but not so hot that you can't enjoy it. I'm sitting on the side of the lake enjoying just a light breeze, kind of drying me off a little bit. And it's lunchtime. And what I thought I'd do today, rather than have a big heavy lunch, is have something a little lighter. So it's going to be a soup kind of, and I'll explain. Uh, I brought out some more of the Wild Zora products, and recently I, I released a video where I used one of the Wild Zora meat bars and combined it with one of their Insta Cup of soups for a snack lunch. Well, I'm doing the same thing today, but I've got another ingredient that I want to share with you, and I think, I guess the idea is to show you that you can add to these things if you want a little bit more body in your lunch. But rather than go through each of these bars and soups in future videos, I thought I'd just give you the range of what I have here today. And uh, yeah, and then we'll put something together. So this is an example, and I'll, I'll talk about each of them in a second, of one of the Wild Zora meat bars. And what makes these bars unique, as I've mentioned in other videos, is to start with, it's made with 100% grass-fed beef. No antibiotics, no... Uh, it, you know, it's totally organic, totally healthy, and there, that does make a difference, not only in the nutrition, but in the flavor and texture as well. There's also no glutens or soyas or nuts or milks added to these things. And all the ingredients are natural and organic. So I'm going to go through each one of these, uh, just showing you the range of flavors, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll put some lunch together. So the first one I have is the chili, the chili beef. As I go through these, I'm going to decide which one I want for lunch. Uh, this one is the taco pork. This one is the barbecue beef. And this one is the curry turkey. And there's one or two other bars that I didn't bring out with me today because, well, I don't have any of them left. I've uh, eaten them all that uh, you can check out on the website to see what they're all about. Now, I've had some people comment back to me on these bars saying that, that you know, they're, they're a little plain. And I, it's not so much plain in flavor as it's plain in texture. If you look at these and expecting something that is like a beef jerky, you're going to be a little disappointed because it's not the same texture as a beef jerky. It's more of a chew rather than that uh, stringiness of a beef jerky. That's because it's combined with the vegetables in it as well. The flavor is definitely there. It's not overpowering, but it's definitely there, as is the nutrition. You know, each one of these packages, uh, they have two little bars. They're 100 calories, but it's 100 calories of high protein. And what, let's see, in this case, 7 grams of protein. So that's a fair amount of protein in each one of these packages. Now, they also have a line of soups. that I'm going to show you. Do I have them all? One more. Oh, two more. All right. So the soups are very much the same in that they have no grains, no glutens, no added sugars. They are made with uh, grass-fed beef, 100% uh, grass-fed beef. They're instant cup of soup, so they're very nutritious. They only have about 50 calories, but again, they're a high protein. So even this soup has 5 grams of protein in it. So if I add that 5 grams of protein to the 7 grams of protein in the meat bar, and then have some, uh, something else with it for my lunch, I've got a fairly nutritious lunch. So uh, again, what do I have for some of the range here is mild picante beef soup. That one sounds interesting. I don't want anything too spicy on a hot day like this. Savory beef soup. All right, that's interesting. There's the savory beef soup. Mushroom beef soup. That would be nice, but I think I'm going to pass that one over. Tuscan chicken soup. That's kind of interesting. Oh, here's one. Lemon chicken soup. Lemon chicken soup. Oh, look what I found in my package. There was one more meat bar that I, I had missed when I mentioned the meat bars a minute ago. This one is the Mediterranean lamb. And, you know, I think I'm going to use the Mediterranean lamb. What am I going to combine it with today? Uh, not the beef. Oh, you know what? What am I going to combine this with? No? Okay, changed my mind. I'm going to go with something beef-based. So I'm going to use one of the Savi Savoy beef soups and mix it in with the barbecue beef and that's going to be lunch today, combined with another ingredient. Something I've started experimenting with, and this will be the first time I've actually tried using it, and that is dehydrating cauliflower. So this is dehydrated 
and vacuum sealed cauliflower. So, you know, very simple process. Blanch the cauliflower, chop it up into relatively small pieces, put it on my dehydrator, make it dry, uh, then put it in a, a, an airtight bag like this one. And this is probably four or five months old. Now, I haven't used this before, so it's a bit of experiment. So what I'm gonna do is uh, filter some water, put it in my pot, put this in and let it rehydrate for a little while before put it in on the heat. So that just gives us a chance to rehydrate and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, all right, so I'm gonna reposition the camera and uh, we'll make some lunch. All right, um, I'm uh, kind of set myself up behind a rock here on the side of the lake just to give a little wind protection. And uh, I won't be using the stove right away because I do want to try and rehydrate the cauliflower. I'm actually quite interested to see what this is going to turn out like. As I mentioned, I, I have not tried this before. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like. So the cauliflower right now is dry. <laughs> That's all it is. Just dried up. It's at least, I don't know, a quarter of the size, maybe a third of the size it was before. Oh yeah, every bit. Maybe less than a quarter of the size that it was before I put it in the dehydrator. So, how much water? Well, I'm going to start by just covering it and letting it rehydrate for a while to see what that does. And if it looks like it needs a little bit more water, then I'll add more water. Do you know, I think I'm going to put the soup right in at the same time. Might as well let that rehydrate in with the food. And I decided to go with the picante beef. So a little bit of spice. Yeah, that looks good. Put that in with it. As I said, I'll put in, I have filtered water here. I have to filter some more. I'm thinking I just put in about a cup and a half, maybe not quite that much. Give it a little stir. Oh, I think it's gonna use all of that, maybe two cups of water. But we'll put the cover on, it's sitting here in the sun Rehiding out, give it 15 20 minutes, give it a look. I'll bring it back and then we'll finish the lunch. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, maybe not quite. It didn't absorb all the water that I had put in that cup and a half, but that's okay because I, I haven't put the heat to it yet. I'll show you what the cauliflower looks like now, mixed in with the soup. Now, I didn't say why I chose to use the cauliflower, why I'm experimenting with it at all. But uh, cauliflower is a good, low-carbohydrate type of food that gives you quite a bit of bulk. It goes well with a lot of other foods. So it goes well with the whole theme of the Wild Zora products. It's an, not a grain, although you might think it looks like rice or some noodles of some type in there right now. Uh, yeah, it's just a good nutritious food that gives you an alternative to using grain products. Now, the other thing I did while I was uh, waiting is cut up the meat bars. So these are the, the little bit tasty. Yeah, but they're going on oh, a little bit of spicy. That's the, which one did I choose? The chili beef, right. So that's the chili beef. It's got a little bit of spice. I did bring a spice kit just in case. I uh, find it needs a little bit more spice, but we'll see, we'll see. So, as you can see, I am going, well, it's not an ultralight kit so much as it is. This is what I had to use today, because we're still under a fire ban, because of all this nice weather. So, I prefer not to use stoves like this, but if you want something hot, sometimes that's what you got to use. All right. I don't think I need this really hot. I'm just going to simmer it. Turn that down a little bit. There we go. Put it on. Now these little stoves can be very intense. I'm sure you're aware if you use them with their flame, especially this one. This has this, one of the little titanium ones. And they... Uh, the flame is very, you know, intense in one spot. So the trick with it is you use it at a low intensity, unless you're just trying to boil water, of course, and move the food around. 
I'll give it a second to start to heat up. So what I'm going to do is just take a few minutes to heat this up. I'll bring it back and uh, we'll see what it tastes like. All right. Pot's going to be a little hot. Put the bandana on my knee. It only took a couple minutes to heat this up. I don't think I need to put it on my knee. Hmm. Looks good. Mm, it smells pretty good. There's a little bit of a cauliflower smell to it. I think if I let it soak longer, some of that cauliflower smell would have uh, dissipated. Actually, it has a little bit already. Uh, there's a lot of cauliflower here. <laughs> I didn't really judge how much I had made. Uh, this is quite a bit more than I probably would do otherwise, but let's try it. Oh, spicier than I thought. You know, it may have been the, the heat that released some of the spice from that meat. It's a bit spicier than I thought it was. So the cauliflower could have stood a little bit more rehydrating before I heated it. Makes it just a little bit crunchy. Not inedible. It's not unpalatable or anything. It's just, I think I could have left it a little longer. In fact, I could just leave it longer now, I guess, sit here. But I'm hungry. I brought my spice cap. I think I might add a little bit of salt because they're a low salt meal, both the, the soup and the and the meat bars. Hmm. That's about all I'm gonna do with it. Do you know? This is the first time I tried the cauliflower like this. And adding that wild Zora cup of soup and meat bar has turned that into a good sized meal. This is actually quite a good sized meal now. I'll do it again. My experience and takeaway from this is that uh, the cauliflower needed a little bit more rehydrating, just sitting in the, in the water for a while longer. Or if I had a fire and, and unlimited fuel, I could have simmered it in a little bit more water for a longer period of time. But as it is with the 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes of rehydration and about four or five minutes of heat, it's still good. It's still good. Just a little bit on the chewy side. That's it. But it's an experiment that I'll call a success and something that I will do again. And that's about all you can ask for from a good, you know, a successful experiment. Anyway, I guess the point was the wild Zor soup and meat bars are great by themselves, either as a trail snack, as a, a quick cup of something hot to drink. Combine together, make a little bit more of a snack or a meal out of it. Combine it with something else like this cauliflower, and you've got a full meal with plenty of flavor. I did say I'd add a little salt, and I will. But other than that, uh, yeah, it, it, it just makes them a little bit more uh, versatile in preparing meals. And that's basically the, the concept that I wanted to try to get across. So if you have any questions about any of the Wild Zora products that I have shown so far, and I have a playlist which is going to be linked at the end here, I have a few more of their products that I'll be bringing to you in a little while. If you have any questions about the ones that I have tried so far, any that you would like me to try if I don't have them, I'll see if I can get them. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to be putting a link to Wild Zora. I understand there is a challenge getting them in Canada. The range of them is not quite the same. You can get them from the States. I'm sure if you speak with Zora or her marketing people, she'll arrange a way to get them in Canada. But if you're in the States, I think, you know, this has always been one of the super healthy meals for those people that want the very best in terms of health, healthy foods while they're on the trail. Okay, that's enough on this. I'm going to sit back on this beautiful, can you see this behind me? Man, what a beautiful day. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the sunshine and enjoy this nice meal and the rest of the day. Coffee, though. I will be making myself some coffee. Okay, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.